we are just basically going to follow um, Douglas steps for implementing this. Uh, the first thing that he did was go on the Brit selector, who I'm actually going to change the name now. I'm going to call it Breed. I'm going to call it, not even breed, I'm just going to call it dog form. Um, change this to dog form. Dog form and app, I need to make sure that I no longer say breed selector, but just dog form. Um, Change this here. Dot form. Uh, let's see. Let's just make sure that everything works still. I think it still still seems to work. Yep. Uh, so the first thing that Douglas uh, did was probably just add uh, input type number here. Number. And he said he. I feel like it's safe. Uh, what he did about, let's say that range, uh, this is something that you will do, you know, you are the developers of your apps. You you allow the user to do certain things. And in this case, Douglas decided to only allow uh, the, name, the number of photos for, to go from one to 10. And that is a perfect uh, good like, assumption or restriction that he added to his app uh, just to sort of be safe. So I'm gonna do the same thing, just say min. Uh, one max uh, ten. Uh, that alone uh, unterminated JSX. Uh, I forgot to close this here. That gives us this input box that has these like little buttons. Um, the good thing about input type number is it doesn't let us type any letters. Um, oh E. You can see it could be a scientific number. Um, but um, mostly just numbers, and you could also just go with the arrows up and down uh, on your computer, and it will just increase or decrease that number. Oh, this is interesting, though. No? Uh, if I type, this is something that you, we may want to watch out for. Like, if I type one, two, three, uh, it just ignores the, the max. Uh, basically, um, in that case, we could just have like a small function that runs to check if the value is. So just have the min and max as a first one check, um, and then after we could just have another check uh, that once this is changing, just make sure that it's always under ten. We can maybe we can maybe we could do that on the handle input. So. So we have our input, then we, we need to think about where do we want to store this number. Uh, we know that we need it in state um, because it's going to change over time um, and it's affecting the way our UI looks, but then should it live in the doc form state or should it be in the app state? Uh, the answer is it needs to live in the app state. Um, and an even better question is why do we needed in app state rather than in the doc form, for instance. What do you think? What are some of the thoughts as to why in the app instead of just local to the doc form? Michael? Uh, we can't do it in the form. But we, uh, we could. We have a state in the form. Oh, wait, what's, oh, 
use Kevin's. Say that again. Right, we can't access this state from the app. <laughs> Do this. Um, it's because our URLs uh, are currently in the app. So mm -hmm. we need the dog. Uh, so we need also the number there as well. So we can put that number, uh, like we need to use that with the, the URL of the access request. Mm -hmm. okay. Right, so as Zuba as said, we need the number to make the network request. So this is where, this is the scenario where we have. So then I call this instead of the grid selector, it's no longer the selector, it was like a form, I call this doc form. And the reason why the URL and the number leaving app is because when they are obtained from the doc form, the doc form has the inputs that allow us to get those values, but those values not only affect dog form, it will affect the dog list, which this is called dog display, and it will affect the number of dogs that are just rendered on this side also. So you can just think of that information of the, uh, the dog number, the number of dogs, or the, the, U, the URLs, as information that is affecting like more, uh, is affecting or needed uh, in more than one component, right? And we, we, when we have information that is affecting or needed, needed in more than one component, we know that we have to lift the state up to a common ancestor, in this case app, for that app to be able to share the information among its siblings. Um, I Oh, uh, we had... Mm -hmm. I see, I see. Uh, so what you're saying is like, a, we could just take a second argument here. Yeah, num, num of dogs or whatever. Okay. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Um, and in this, in this fashion, if we have, if we have the dot picture function taking these two arguments, um, then, then we can have number of dogs being uh, local to the dog form. Local, actually, yes. This is. Thank you for that point, um, Hugh Paul. Because then we we also think about the the number of dogs we just needed for making the network request, right? We needed we needed the number of dogs and. This is sort of abstract, right? Yeah, we need the number of dogs in the form to be able to like update that number and read and read from the input box. And we need the we need the number of dogs to make the network request to get that number that number of dogs, right? And so I guess like we found two two methods basically in which we could do that. One is we could have the number of dogs in app. Um, because app is the one that is making an error request to get dogs, <coughs> or indirectly we're giving, like, or what Hubel suggested, which is, well, app is having a function to the, to the dog form, for the dog form to call to get the dogs, right? So we could just use that function to indirectly give uh, the app the number of dogs, which will be passed as an argument, is just that the number of dogs will not live in app state. It will live in the dog form state. Uh, but we're still sort of we're still sort of passing it. We're still passing the the uh, the number of dogs 
from uh, the top form to the app, it's just that we're doing it through the through an argument instead of through props, basically. Um, and I I do like this idea better since uh, we, when we think about it, like the number of dogs, we just need the number of dogs to get uh, an array of pictures. To get an array of that many pictures, we don't need it anywhere else. What we do need, um, what we do need is, what else would we need anywhere else? Well, what we do, what we do need is just get that array of pictures um, from that we get through the dot form that we save in state on app and that we can pass into the dots. So let's implement that then here. Um, so, cool. So on doc, on the doc form, uh, let's just have we have our we have our input. We just need to keep track of that. So let's have an on change here. On change. Let's do this that handle num. Num of dogs. And let's just define a function here. Handle num of dogs. That the only thing that it's going to do is set the state. So get the event there, this dot set state. Um, num of dogs. So e dot target that value. Let's make sure that we have that on our state. Number of dogs. Um, this number of dogs will just will by default be put as um, a string because when we have uh, when we receive input from the user on any input box, we always get a string back. And if we need it in a number, we'll need to convert it. In this case, we don't really need it in a number per se. So um, let's just make sure that then, as I refresh this, um, let me put this right here on the side. Let's open the developer tools, go to our, to inspect our component. Now let's see if doc form, now has this state. Um, as I refresh or as I increase my number here, <coughs> we see our state changing down here. Here we can see it. It's kind of hard, but as I increase. It increases. Cool. So that's one step. I also note, for instance, here, sort of just to uh, also demonstrate what we were talking about yesterday about like an uncontrolled component. We go to the doc form, and I have my state has the number of docs should be one, right? I want to start at one, but my input box is not starting at one. My input box is starting empty. Right? How do we fix this? Is the I have talked about this a few times now. About the information like living in two places. I want I want my input box to start with one instead of starting with empty. Michael? So we set the value the input by default to have a very object. Mm-hmm. So we have an unchange. So as Michael is saying in here, whenever we have an input, we want to make sure that we have an event listener as well as we explicitly set the value. So, set value, uh, let's bring that from state, let then just destructure it here. Num of dogs. Of dogs. Once we have set the value explicitly, now our input box starts with whatever we have in state. Uh, even Let's do, cool. 
Let's fix the reset so that reset will reset it to uh, one. So let's go to the handle reset. Reset select, we have it here. Let's do num of dog, we want, we want it to go back to um, one. Just the string one. Let's see, that's, this should make, this should make our reset, reset both. It resets the select box as well as the number of pictures. Cool. Any questions up until this point about the input, um, the event listener, and setting the value, where the state is, etc. Uh, let me share this link so that you can connect. So we have that, then what will be the next step? After we have the input, uh, we have somewhere in state to control it. What do we do after, after that? What do we do after we have the input um, for the number of photos? O'Neill? Put it into the endpoint? Into the endpoint? You mean the, for the URL? Yeah, URL. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right, that's correct. Uh, the next step that we want to do is use the number uh, in with the API to get that number of photos. Um, so we will do that in, um, I'm, and I'm really glad that Douglas realized this, where we could just um, modify the get.picture instead of having to create another function to get X number of pictures. We can just modify the get dot picture to take into account um, a number of dogs argument um, that we can pass and just you know affect it. And this is also this is a lot of what we do of as developers, sort of like just reusing code. Like you want to realize when you're doing basically the same thing, um, which in this case, uh, what we needed to do was just make a network request. To the, and the only thing that was going to change is just the URL that we're making the network request to. Um, and since the whole purpose of functions is reusability, um, that's what we're going to do. We're going to reuse this function. Cool. So, and here at this point, um, let's try, let's make sure that we, when we call the get doc picture from within the doc form, so let me put this here. I think we have it handle break change, populate select. Where is it that we call the get doc picture? Um, Here. We, we invoke it whenever the button is clicked or whenever um, the select changes, right? So in here, what we want to pass in is, oh, but here we might have, we might have some issues here. We need to pass in the new breed. Uh, we will also need to pass in the, 
number of dogs that we have, and that is in state, right? And you remember yesterday what we saw when we were trying to access the state really soon after it was set? Um, so we might have some issues with that. However, we may not have issues since this is uh, setting a different part of state. This is setting the selected read. Um, so in this case, let's do something like this. Const num of dogs. Let's bring that from the state. Now this this shouldn't have any issues. In fact, because um, we are accessing the num of dogs part of the state, the property of the state, and here we're setting a different um, property of the state. Yesterday when we had that weird issue of like being sort of like one loop behind, uh, it was because we were reading the same property of the state as, uh, and short after, no, no, we were setting the same property of the state and short after trying to read from it where it wasn't really set just yet. Uh, so in this case we should be fine. We do this in num, num of dogs. Cool, so we have that there. We also want to make sure that that's connected also on the handle button. Um, handle new dog button here. We want the selected breed and we also want the num of dogs. So whenever we were calling that get talk dog picture, facts like that, this sort of this will change this, or at least from my perspective, this will change this function's name because now we're getting more than one picture, and this is like a very insignificant name, uh, but it will just be to add uh, these uh, plural pictures because now we're not we can get one or we can get many. Uh, it might seem like a very small thing, um, but it does make a difference when somebody is reading your code. And uh, from here, if, if I get this name, I know that is, or I would expect your function to return a list of something. It can be a linked list, it can be an array, uh, but it definitely more than one thing. Um, so get doc pictures, let's do Let's update everywhere we were doing get doc picture to get doc pictures. Um, cool. Let's see if our app still works. We have made some changes and we want to make sure that um, our app will still work. In this, at this point in time, we are just ignoring the number of dogs as we see on get doc pictures. Uh, we're just not doing anything with the number of dogs just yet. So, but let's go to our uh, app, and we have an error, get dot picture is not a function. So, good thing that we checked before we moved on. This is nice. line 18, um, line 18, is the, get dot reads on what file? App, component amount on app, line 18. This one is get dot picture. Cool. So, oh, so we got an error again here. So it worked for the first time. When it ch changed this, now we get these are props. Get dot picture is not a function. So here again, whenever you're refactoring your code, you want to make sure that you're testing, uh, because I could have moved from here. Uh, and I said everything is working, um, but then I get that error later on, and then I'm confused about where what was the part that I changed that made that error happen. So you want to sort of test um, as you go. So this that this that perhaps I get that picture is not a function. This is doc form line 25. So if we go to doc form line 25, we still have here um, doc pictures. Cool. Um, Let's try now. New dog. Cool. So everything is working just fine. We just haven't taken into account the just haven't taken haven't taken into account the number of dogs. But any questions up until this point? Observations, comments.
from what we're doing to, to this point. Is this making sense? Cool. So we have the get doc picture still works. Uh, now we just need to make the changes that basically Douglas made here um, for the get doc pictures. Um, for that, we just have the number of ducks here, and we can just check. Um, well, actually, in fact, we just need to go to the documentation first, make sure we understand the endpoint that let us put uh, get a certain number of pictures. So, doc CEO dog API documentation uh, as we scroll down here nothing random image display a single random image display a multiple random images from all docs collection so this one for instance is a URL that will let me get three random uh, docs from any from any breed so I'm gonna need this um, so let me maybe copy this here too for a comment so that's that, and let's say we want to find if, how to get a number of dogs by a specific breed. So let's go to by breed. By breed, this is how we can get them all. Random image from a breed collection. And here we can have multiple images from a breed collection. In this case, this is the URL that we want. So we need these two URLs, um, and here I guess we're, what I'm just gonna look at is what is the what is the difference between the ones these ones and the ones that I had before. Seems that for getting a number, the only difference is the you could just put the number at the end and you get that number. So maybe we don't really need this one. Uh, and then on this one, let me copy this. Of here, and on this one we have basically the same pattern here. We have that it's the the breed will go here, images random, and then a slash uh, with the number. Um, this the, this sort of also tells me that the creator of the dog API was following good API design standards uh, for. Um, that is sort of like intuitive, basically. We want our APIs to be intuitive, and um, the dog API managed to do that. So, okay, so we sort of, we just need, in fact, here, we could sort of like, um, just build it on top of Dugo's approach, where we have basically if statements for uh, each one of these. We could just say that we know that here, if, if there is a selected breed, and if there is a number, um, then we want to do, what we want to do is just concatenate at the end uh, of the dog API URL plus equal slash num of dogs basically. So in that case, we don't have to like repeat the entire URL uh, because we realize that the only thing is that if there is a selected breed and if there is an, a dog of num, uh, a num of dogs specified, we just need to add the number followed by a slash um, here. And same thing for this one, I guess. Um, oh, in fact, this one, we don't even need an if statement for this one. Why don't we need an if statement with this one? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, great point. If these are one, so the default is one. So basically, we could, if we get this, let's sort of see. That's a good point. Yeah, we don't even need the if statements. Uh, if we do here, this is how we get a single random dog, this URL. And this will give us the same thing if you just do slash one. You also just get one. Uh, so, great observation. We don't even need the if statements. We could just put the at uh, here at the end. It's 
string interpolation num of dogs and same here slash thank you uh, same thing here cool Great, you we see that like um, this is the value of pair programming and not just coding alone. Um, we find out that there is uh, we could get rid of those if statements and our code is just better uh, when we pair program. Cool. Um, okay, so then we know that this is gonna give us um, let's see, does it change Oh, okay. So there's something did change here that we that we should have noticed. Note the difference between these two responses. You see this one. Um, this one has two properties: message is an array, and status is a string. Note that this is different from this. Now here we have the same two properties, but message is a string now. Um, message is a string um, when we get the slash random slash one we get an array so that's something that we will have to um, account for and on the other hand is um, right it makes it more uniform for when you have more than one so in fact uh, like this is also again sort of like good uh, standard because uh, generally, you return an array when you're returning uh, multiple things, and this is what this endpoint will allow us to do, get more than one, um, uh, get a list. So, okay, so then we have to take into account that before we were dealing with just one string in the message, now we're going to be dealing with an array. Uh, if we go to our app right now, our app should be broken. Um, if we go here, oh, wait, it still works. Um, let's see. Uh, what if we get new dog? New dog. So it still works. Let's make sure. Let's see. All oh, right, because the number is one. So this will work for when the number is one, because on that case, we're just getting one picture. But when the number is two, then it breaks. Or when the number is other than one, it should break. Right? We get that. We get no image at all. And it breaks because, um, as we noted earlier, before we were dealing with just one string in the message property, now we got an array. In fact, we, so, or you know, the functionality broke. If we go to the network request, we can see that more closely. So let's refresh this page. Um, let me close this. So we can he see here uh, the network request though was fired. I think it was probably this one? No, this was to get all of them. This one. Oh, this is interesting. Actually, this the IPI could have could have just um, re rejected our request. We can see here that this is the URL that we're sending. This is the network request that we're making. Image slash random slash undefined. This is the API. It just ignores undefined if you can if you cannot understand it. Maybe another API will just like show you an error message. Um, in this case, so this is something that we'll have to investigate. Why is it undefined? But let's look at the response. When we got a that was a get request, we still got 200, so it went well. If we go to the response, let's go into preview. We get message again. Now this being an array. Um, if we select two new dog uh, and we see we see that now we have two in our response to that network request that was fired to api breeze slash images slash random slash two let's do try with three we have three um, and we can just see that our network request is working so whenever you're debugging this kind of thing, you, you also want to uh, 
break it down. Um, here is like, oh, no image is working. Where do I start looking at? Um, I'll say you should start looking at the network request. Check if the network request is returning to you what you're expecting, first of all. In this case, our network request is expecting is returning what we expect, which is an array with that many number of images. And we can see it here on the network tab in our inspector tools. Now, it's just that then we realize that our app is just not taking into account when it has more than one. When it has more than one URL, what should we do? Our app, before, we're just handling one URL. Um, and this is where then this other component will come into play, the dog list. The component of this component will be to iterate over a list of images and for each one create a dog component to display, basically. And um, <coughs> let's do that next. Uh, any questions up until this point? Also, another thing that, so once you saw that the network request was working, maybe the next thing that you want to do is you want to check if the, if the state is being set properly and to what you expect. So let's look at our state here. Let me actually refresh this. Uh, let's go to components. We have our app on state. We have URL. Uh, one thing that we do notice is that URL, URL starts as an array with one element. Okay, that's interesting. Um, let's try now with two. Now URL changed to an array of two elements with three. The URL changed to an array with three elements. Okay, so our state is being set properly. Um, and we see that we have a URL, something we call a URL that was initially going to hold a string with that URL. Now it's holding an array. Right? So then what this is saying is we should probably then change the name of URL because now it's no longer just holding one thing. Uh, it will hold an array. Oh, and this is, this is interesting that it works for the first one if you think about it. When we first load, we're getting an array with one element. And this is, this is something that I didn't know. It will still work, I guess, in here, where we're passing into our dog here, dog URL. This is going to be an array of one element. And when you pass that to dog URL, and when we pass it here, I guess internally it knows if it's an array of only one element, it knows to pick just the first one. Uh, like if, if we console log here, uh, log props.url, we're gonna see that there, it is an array as we saw it in state. Let's go on uh, console. Let's, ref, uh, let's do maybe like dog props to identify it. Dog props. So we see that on the first on the first go, dog props are an empty string. This is when the app is just booting up. Um, then we got the types of dog. We still do not have that console log somewhere. Here we see that the dog props is this array of only one element. And I guess this, yeah, this, this is something I didn't know. The image, when it sees that to the source, you're passing uh, a URL of one argument, it will just select the first one. When you pass an array of two elements, which is when we pick two here, then it, gets, it doesn't know which one to pick anymore. Um, so let's do that here then. So we now have an array of URLs uh, that we're setting to our state. What we want to do with that is have that component that will just iterate over them. So in fact, uh, actually let's change the state first. So this is gonna start as URLs because now we have more than one. Could be dog URLs, image URLs, um, I'm just gonna leave it URLs. Remember that to update everywhere you were saying URLs, you're now going to say URL. 
uh, anywhere your same URL is not going to be URLs. Oops. This breeds on selected breed, this is some stuff that we're not using anymore. So we're gonna do that. Um, cool. And then here, instead of dog URL, this dog URL, if we inspect what this is going to do, um, this is just rendering one single dog, but now we need to render more than one. Here, like there, my preferred approach is to have a component dog list that is the one in charge of looping over and create it in one. We could also just loop here, in here um, and create, um, just create a dog for each URL that we have. Um, yeah, but in this case, what I want to do is actually just have another component on components. I'm gonna call it dog list at JSX. Uh, on this dog list, we just import React from React as always. Uh, this is going to be a functional component, it doesn't need any state. We receive some props here. Um, let's export it before we forget. And the thing is that this should return is I want this to return a UL. Uh, the equal sign. Oh, thank you. This is going to be a UL. And it's going to have this is going to be the list. Let's just do it like that for now. And I'm going to remove dog from here. And instead, I'm going to bring in the dog list. Dog list. If React, um, VS Code sometimes will do the auto import. So it automatically wrote this line for me. You want to be uh, careful with that. With Sometimes it doesn't happen. Um, so dog list dog form, and let's try this out. This will have a list. Okay, so our dog list component is showing up. Now we just need it to actually do the work, which is on dog list. What we're gonna do is to dog list, we're gonna pass in the URLs basically as a prop. So in here, let's just do URLs. Um, this is gonna come from state, which we already did structure here. So let's just keep it like that, URLs. Now, uh, if we, let's inspect it here on our state. Come in Z. Components. App, so we have our URL of starting with one. Let's try to get a few more. Four, now we have our state with four. Then let's look at the dog list. The dog list, you can remember that you can also inspect the props on your React developer tools. And here I'm inspecting the props for dog list, and we have URLs um, in here with the same array that we saw in app. Um, Cool. So our, our array is making it to dog list. Now dog list, the only thing that dog list needs to do now is just loop over it, um, creating these dog elements for each URL. Uh, we could do this in the fashion that um, Douglas did it, which is an empty array looping over with a regular for loop, a for in or for off loop. Um, or we could just remember that map, um, the whole point of map, is to map an array of some elements to an array of some other elements. And on our dog list, 
the thing that we will need to do is well let's import our single dog from dog and here let's use map to create a list of elements uh, the map will use the URLs that came through props so we just do props dot map for each URL what we want to do is to create a new dog element taking advantage of implicit return um, and this is the dog the dog component is expecting just a URL a URL prop so we do URL URL and in this way this is basically this is the same this code is producing the same uh, output that the regular for loop just pushing the elements to uh, the array um, cool so we have this I think it should work now let's try it out if we go to our app oh props that map is not a function as we saw yesterday, when you can, you, when you get this kind of errors, um, is because props is not what you expect. Props here, we're expecting props to be. Well, in this case, in this case, I I want to do a map over an array, but props is not an array. Right? Props is an object. What did I forget here? Props that URL, so I started it somewhere. This is the array. So cool. Also, okay, I, our single photo came back. Let's try maybe two. New dog. We got three. And we, I think we have our app working once again. Let's try three be, uh, beagles. We got three beagles. Boxers, we got three. We've got six boxers. We got six boxers. We reset. We go back to blank. We get one. We get now three. Cool. So, questions, comments, concerns. How does this work? Um, Separating our apps. Yep. So, so again, just looking at, at map, mm -hmm. which is so you call map on your array, which yep. is URLs. Yes. Um, and then inside of uh, so so inside of the parentheses. Mm -hmm. um, what is this thing? What is the name your, for this thing? That's a uh, it's a something function. Callback function, that's Call correct. Mm -hmm. um, where, and so basically, it ever, you're, you're defining each iteration as URL. Right, every element. So the first thing is also, yeah, knowing that map for each, all of those are loops, and you're passing a callback that will get call for each element. Mm -hmm. The argument, as you were saying, um, the argument to that callback will be each uh, individual element. In this case, I call that element URL. Gotcha. Um, and then the, the return, the arrow, is that you're, you're building a, 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 a React component. A dog, yeah, a dog component, I'll just call it. Yeah, which is a React component. Um, and this is, this is taking advantage of implicit return, which is with ES, uh, with ES6 arrow functions, we don't have to write return um, if we are not if we're doing like short functions like this, uh, and we don't have curly brackets. If we have the curly brackets to sort of like define the body of the function, in this case, we'll need to write return. So this here, this accomplishes the same task, but now we do need to the explicit return. Um, yeah. Function if you do a return, like at the first iteration. Um, right. Then that is that's a good question. 
It's because that return is for the callback, mm -hmm. not for the looping, okay. not for the array, yeah. Mm -hmm. So other questions? This is React. <laughs> you remember when you were doing HTML <laughs> and JavaScript? Yeah. This is still HTML and JavaScript, it's just in a different way, in the React flavor. Um, but yeah, like just thinking of an app like this on an app like this on simple HTML, it wouldn't be that hard, but it will be like a lot of functions and probably global variables um, that you will have. Um, and like with React, we get that nice re-rendering when the state changes, right? Like on our case, we will have to care, we'll have to take care of that um, when something changes, sort of re-render. Um, or update. Yes? Does a slower internet connection affect React the same way like when we slow down before mm -hmm. um, our, our network calls? Yeah, uh, as, as low network will still affect your React. In fact, like, let's do it here. Uh, actually, I guess like that's, I wanted to show that like maybe in the next 15 minutes that we have. Um, but like, let's look here, network. Let's slow down, let's go to slow 3G. As I refresh the page, then, oops, oh, I closed it. I can't close this if I wanna have it slow down. I refresh the page, then it takes this time. The thing is like with your React app, well, if your React app is making network requests, then it is, of course it's gonna be affected by the, uh, by the speed of the network. Um, since we have like these are single page apps, um, you can provide certain like offline functionality. Um, let's say like if we store if we store these images, um, like once these images are retrieved, I feel like once as we start into so today we're gonna see routing how to have multiple routes. We're still gonna be using the dog API and we're gonna have the cat API. Um, and about, um, yeah, like once we have routes, then we can start to think about, um, how like this is a single, at the end of the day, this is a single page app. Um, and this is what React allows to do, like single page apps that look like they have multiple pages, but it's actually, um, just a single one and some simulation. Um, So let's do something that I wanted to do was like um, show a spinning animation whenever we don't have anything to show to the user. Um, just how we see that like in this 15 minutes that we have, I think that shouldn't take us long. So I'm just gonna look here for like spinner. I think it's spinner animation uh, CSS to probably give us something. Loader, well, there are some loaders. So let's say this one, for instance, we have this animation that is like loading. Um, oh, there are some others. Let's say we wanna use this, for instance. So in this case, we know that the spinner is actually just this. It's this div and some CSS. So what, how about this, I'm gonna do even if it's just one, in this case, I create a component called uh, like spinner.jsx. This is going to be a functional component um, for 
um, react um, react const spinner. Uh, do we need some props? I don't think we need props. So let's just leave it like that. Return. This div. And I'm going to have like import uh, spinner CSS that I haven't defined yet. Maybe I'm going to have a folder called styles. I could just also just leave it there. Um, it's sort of, sort of for organizational reasons. In source, I'm going to create a folder called styles. And in here, I'm going to create a file called spinner.css. And in this spinner.css, I'm just going to copy this CSS. Copy the CSS that I found on how to CSS loader on W3 schools. And this will just provide a, a better user experience. So let's try this out. So we have the spinner component. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna render it like right here just to see if it works. Spinner. Uh, let's make sure that we import it here at the top. Uh, import spinner from components. Spinner. Um, let's see, go to our browser, to our app. Spinner does not contain a default export. So it uh, seems that I forgot to export the spinner. Export default spinner. And we have our spinner here. So that's cool, uh, you know, it's working. I just wanted to make sure that the CSS will apply uh, the way that we want it. Uh, and instead it's just, we basically uh, can have, if the uh, if our application is loading, then show the spinner. Um, if you finish loading, just hide the spinner and show the content. Um, but any questions about the spinner itself right now? About what it is, how we got it? Oh, class name, thank you. Yeah, because this is React now. Uh, I'm actually surprised that it worked. Cool. So, then how can we say that our app is loading and how can we say finish loading? I mean, using, use, using the life cycle. Um, so, Okay, tell me more about that. I'm waiting for the for the dog list to run. Mm -hmm. Before that, we yeah, before that we need to run the yeah. Okay, I guess right. So I guess we'll have to doubt anything that then we'll have to think about. Do we want to show the spinner for when the images are loading? For sure, I think. But do we also have to show the spinner for when this is loading? For when the like the brain is loading, and basically just show, basically don't show anything. Show the spinner on, until until we get a read list. Um, and I think let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it for the images first. Um, let's do it when the, when the images are loading. Let's show the spinner, um, and when they finish loading, we show the images. So in that case. What we can do here is for the component in mount get doc pictures. 
So the get doc picture is the one that is going to be in charge of fetching the images. What we could do here is right at the beginning, we could just have this function. Let's let's have this here. Um, let's have on our state. So we're gonna need an, an extra property in our state. We need that extra property. Um, because it's something that is going to change over time and it will affect the way in which our uh, UI looks. We want to affect the way in which our UI looks um, so that we, when we don't have images, we show the spinner. Once the images arrive, we hide the spinner and we show the images. So we could do something like pictures loading. So set this to, since we know that is we know that they're gonna start, um, we know that in component in mount, we want to get the picture. So we could start it at true. And let's, let's do this now. So this, let's say the pictures are loading by default because well, they will actually be in the component in mount. Um, pictures loading true. And then let's just have something here. Um, and here, just with the, uh, Let's bring the pictures loading here on our state, on our render, pictures loading. And we could say here, um, with a ternary or with a, yeah, with a ternary here is more convenient actually than the if statement. We could just say, um, if the pictures are loading, then we wanna show the spinner. Otherwise show, otherwise show the, Oh wait, what happened? If the pictures are loading, show the spinner, otherwise show the dog list. This is what this is saying. Uh, and oftentimes I like I like to like format it this way. Just personal preference. Um, pictures loading, this is like if yes, show the spinner. If no, show the dog list. Um, yes, you will need brackets for that. Thank you, Cameron. Even though I think I think my my uh, auto formatting tool will remove this formatting that I have. Let's see. But this is how I would sort of write it. Oh, cool! I didn't remove it. Um, and if we have this and we go to our app, uh, we have an error. Oh, why do we have an error? Oh, I, somebody erased the div. And then we got this. <laughs> it will load forever uh, because we never changed that flag um, or the pictures loading back to uh, false. So how do we set that to false? Um, what we can do here is in the get doc pictures, once we get the pictures, let's just set pictures loading to false because well, the pictures finish loading. Let's do that here. In our set state inside of get doc pictures, we can say loading pictures loading, set it back to false and Let's see what this gives us. That will give us this sort of behavior. We see the spinner, um, and it's, it's just really quick, but if that do does make a difference if you have like a slower network, um, because the spinner, the purpose of the spinner is to indicate to the user that something is about to happen, that he just needs to uh, wait. Um, that something is in process of happening. Let's see. We get our spinner and let's just get it center and I think that will be it. For getting the spinner center, I guess what we could do is, we see that the images are center. The images are center because they're inline elements and we have in our CSS, in app.js, I think we said out CSS so text align center. So this is aligning everything. Uh, but in our spinner, 
CSS, I think. We could just say, let's do here, display inline block. Let's see if this does the trick. Oops, uh, doesn't really work that well. Here, let's do the, let's have to style on the spinner, let's just have the spinner always showing. So let me not set it to false here. Just always show it. Oh, you can even see how it actually works. It is just turning the entire thing <laughs> um, with CSS. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see how then we can inline block didn't work let's try like inline oh inline inline makes mess it up uh, what we can just do is wrap this um, wrap or spinner Oops. Make our spinner into so this is the div. Just make it into another div that will put it in a separate line. Um, and I think maybe now. Now we get it like center. We got this div that will make it to put it in a separate line. We could have maybe this day we could just have it. Let's do it. So that we put the spinner in the center. Let's have this day be display things flex. Align items center. Um, justify content center. Oh, but then we'll need to do height uh, 100vh. No, let's do not 100%. Since we don't have we don't have set the height of the parent, uh, this will need to be yeah, like depending on the view height. Let's say something like seventy view h. That will center it. So let's take this, uh, put it in our maybe put it in our spinner CSS, <coughs> spinner CSS. But this will go to like the spinner container. So we're gonna do spinner. Container and let's just make sure that in our spinner here, let's go plus this spinner JSX, we just give this a class name of container. Uh, all that CSS in, uh, we got it there, so that's a little bit better. Let's just turn this, let's turn this back on so that when the picture is loading to false. And we sort of got that small effect there where it just have it happens really quick um, because the network request is fast, but on a, on a slower network, um, your user will appreciate that you're telling him or her that something is about to happen, that something is um, loading. Let's slow this down a little bit to see. Slow 3G. Maybe like on this one, like you will still want 
I have never done this, for instance, like show a spinner here, because our entire app is loading. Um, that will be better. So you can see that, like, I'm going to show the spinner. And then, well, on that one, I'm not sure if we could actually, because that, that other blank space that we have in the middle was for the image, the actual image to arrive. Uh, we have our, what we're waiting for is for the URL to arrive. Then the browser receives the URL, and the browser has to make another request to that URL to get the image. Um, I'm sure there is a way to handle that as well, um, but this is a small thing that I I wanted to sort of like show how to how to handle at least at, at a base level. Um, any questions? Yeah, final. What is changing it back to true? Uh, the, what is changing it? So it starts, out, it starts off as true, because we want to say like it's loading. Uh, what changes it to false is when we get the pictures. And I guess it, so when it turns back to true? It never goes back to true. Oh, so like at this point, once. yeah, they only, we only get a, Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah, we didn't get to do. When I get another batch of dogs, I'm not gonna see the spinner again. Um, actually, yeah. So the, in fact, if we do that, we get. Oh, I think my app broke. Um, oh no, it is working. It just take some time. Um, actually, you know what? It should be. The default to true, well, actually, it doesn't matter here. On the dog pictures, dog pictures should be the one that sets it to true initially, and it sets it back to false once you get the request. So here we can just do uh, this dot set state real quick. This uh, pictures loading true, and this will make it so that it fires sort of the it will fire the spinner any time we get um, new dots. Hopefully, let's see. It's reloading. We got the spinner on the first one. Um, then let's say we got we want a beagle. Then we got the spinner again. Oh, this one seems to have just, this one just failed, and we're stuck in the spin. Uh, but that's, that's it, at least for the morning. Um, go grab some lunch uh, on the afternoon. Uh, we're going to talk about how to have multiple routes. Um, and basically, the hopefully we end up a little bit earlier, and we can start on the uh, React routing lab um, that also incorporates uh, networking stuff. So that's why you sort of, combining the two labs into one. Yeah. Any final questions, make sure to reach out. Um, yeah.
uh, the spinner for like when to show the spinner to stop showing the spinner when the image loads. Uh, the problem is that right now we have it. We get the URLs, and that's when we stop the spinner. But the image will take some more time to load the image itself. When do is it, like do loading it the function. Do it before you make the API call, the sync, and after the sync call. Right, that's so what we were doing. That's what we were doing. Work. But the problem is that there is a if when the network request is low, uh, there is a there is a blank spot, which is oh wait, let's see, let me comment this out. So the network request is I think is it slow? Is it slow? No. So let's do it slow and when I click on new dog, see it's spinning. Here we got oh for some reason the network request is failing. And I wonder if this is a new thing because it's saying it's throwing an error about course. Is this good course? Is it because it's Chrome's handle that goes? Oh. Not sure why it's just throwing a, a course you show when I can't. It's like a Chrome is handling. But if we didn't have like this uh, the entire anywhere else, nowhere else, like here. But when you change the speed, the Chrome handles that request. Yeah, but it, it shouldn't matter. But. Real fast, do do? Let's try. Let's try this and see if it. So here, it made a request to get all the braids, and that succeeded. No course problem. This also succeeded. Um, we get a new dog. This is failing. Copy the link. Is that the right link? Not right. No, it's link. And this one is spelling with course. The only reason could be that they that they changed the API. Just visit. Yeah, let's see here. So then, I think it's not working there, and we get this error data. So that might be because then maybe when. Yeah, that's the error, and the error is pointing us to the map, which is this. And I think it might be just because this message, when you're getting only one. Mm -hmm. um, Message my it's a string I think, uh, and then we can't do map on strings when it's a single one. So what you need to do is. Oh, also wait. Uh, I think here you might just need you. You want to use. The I didn't need this one because every time I did this one, I would get the number instead. Of right. Yeah. You don't need that. You don't need that line at all. Um, I was constant, but I can always just minus my mm -hmm. number. That's good, that's good. Um, well, we could see, have you used the debugger? Let's, see, let's use the debugger for instance, like here, try it, like, 
maybe at the end. I'll do that. Uh, just like in on line 57, add a new line and type in debugger. This debugger, then you just, uh, that's it, like just the keyword. Just okay. save, oh. um, and then run, run, run it again. So show like the first one. Wait, wait so when, when, when did it work? When you select the breed, it works? Oops, when you select the breed. Oh. Right, so here we stopped, our mm -hmm. code is stopped, and we are here in the debugger. Uh, so we're sort of stopping time whenever we put the debugger. And then if you go here, um, you, could, you can start hovering around to see what stuff is. So here we can stop on message. Um, and we can see here that like data that message is an array of one element. Um, so in this case, the map was going to work because it's this array. We can see like what array ends up with, which is that, which is that. Um, and in general, you just like hover over stuff to see the values, which is handy. Um, cool. And in this case, it works. So in this case, we just let it go. To just leave to leave the call the code execute, just click on this one. Right. And that's cool. So now let's make it break and let's see how it hangs out on the debugger. Number three. That's not even going to the debugger. Oh uh, yeah, that's interesting. Was it click on click on like leave more than one? Mm, so it's, it's not breaking. Okay, L release the debugger with the thing, let it go. Okay, um, wait, so then, wait, how did we get it to break? Just like, I don't know you really don't. Like, I just know that right here, select the three. Uh -huh. Before, I, um, like, if I were to change it, just put everything back to where it was, like, right here, mm -hmm. this would work. This would be um, the URL, and it will get the message, and everything will go through. But I can't. Selected breeds would be false when I load up radio. So. Uh huh. Uh, wait, I think we will need to. I guess let's just see why it doesn't work with one single one. I guess we could. Do you have a console log for when you. When you click on the dog button? No, I don't. This may be. Where's my debug? Okay. I thought it should be right there. Let's get dog picture. So let's look at that picture. That's this function, I guess. Yeah, it's this one here. I'll put it at the top. But, wait, no, but then. The debugger should run. Oh wait, it, it, could it be because it's, it's going in the cache then? Yeah, oh I see. The debugger is not running, but it does because we just put it in the wrong place. We have the debugger inside of the then. So that means that if the, if the function uh, rejects, we never get to the other place. So then let's put the debugger maybe at, right before the actions request. Maybe you do command F debugger. Yeah. And um, cool. So then here we got on the first. Wait, did we get on the first one? Yeah, I guess we. Okay, so we're getting in on the first load. That means this function is being called. Uh, for some reason, though, um, this is the image URL to get random. Oh, I think I see already the problem. Um, but so we we this is the URL that we're gonna use. Right. Um, this URL is gonna get us a single a single URL. So if we this is not gonna get us an array of URLs. This is gonna be a single one. Um, and then if we, if we keep going, keep going. 
And right now we are here. Let's see. Let's get a network request so we can just print stuff. Oh, that is not fine. The email is not gone. Oh, wait. Uh, now we just now we just went on to the other ones, but in here I guess right here where we've stopped, the network request I think are already finished. You can look at it in here network. Um, well actually I don't see it here, but let's try to do this in the console. You you can also do stuff like this that state, and this this console is sort of tied to the context of that debugger. Yeah. So in here we can say that the URLs, arrays are empty. Um, well, let's keep going. Let's try URLs. It's empty here. I guess it's still number of. It's empty. We just need need to let it go. And then we get this data. That message map is not a function. Right, so the problem here is, is just that the network request, if we look at the network request here, this one, mm -hmm. so this is the first network request you're firing, right. which is going to this URL that we saw here, this URL. Mm -hmm. Right, so this is, the, this is the URL. The problem is that this one, this URL returns a string, but your code, that's why your code works when you have you have more than one, I think, you'll work. Uh, is it when you have more than one? No, when you have... More than one in a breed. More than one in a breed? Okay, but if, when you have more than one in a breed, this now, this network request will return to you an array that then your code knows how to render. Like this, you see? Mm -hmm. This one is an array of these two. And you are doing the map on this, this array, and then you can see the images. Uh, the problem is that when you get this one, you can't do map on a string. So what you you will need to do is, uh, I think you you might have missed it when we went over that, but that is just here. Use the num of the number up here too, and what that does is, yeah, what that does is in here. If we go to this URL, so this let's see it one more time. If we go to this URL you get a single one, right. right? But if you go to whatever number, even if like two, you get two, and you get an array. Uh, so you, here, you can just do one, and you will get that one in an array, which then map can go over. Oh. Um, and I did talk about this when we were like refactoring the code. Um, but then it will be basically just using num number off here as well, uh, because your code works when you're getting more than one. Right. And I set the default value. Right. So and that's the, only, that's the only piece that you're missing here, basically, right. that string interpolation, because every, but after that, um, after that, everything should work. Right, like this one is saying that you have a selected breed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so in just here, basically, just you need to interpolate just like that number off, so that the map can receive, the map will receive data that message as an array instead mm -hmm. of the string, and then it can map over uh, over the array. Oh, sure. Does that make sense though? Yes, it does. Cool. Okay. I guess I'm very intuitive.
Because I was wondering, do we need an input for that? Um, what do you mean, like, an input? Like, um, like the an top. An input top box? Input box? Uh, no, you, yeah, you don't need any input, you just have buttons. The numbers are going to be buttons. Yeah, because, uh -huh. like, before I had it on everything on the top, it would show up at the bottom. So I see. What you will do is want to have here sort of like a div or a paragraph where you have basically a display. Uh, but no, no need for input yet. 